there, beautiful people, my gorgeous foodies. Welcome to Mala's Kitchen. Hi, Mala. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Let's get the show on the road because we have a fabulous recipe to get through. Hola, my foodies. This is your girl, Mala, coming to you from Mala's Kitchen to yours. And uh, today we're getting ready to make cheesecake five ways. And guess what? It's a no bake cheesecake and no bake cheesecake with five flavors so let's get in and see what we've got here that's all laid out all righty so over here i have two cupcake tins which i have one is with mini cupcakes and of course i've lined this all already with these little mini paper uh, cups like this and this holds about 24. Over here, this is a slightly bigger version, which is a larger cupcake size. And I'm using, once again, a paper cupcake, or rather a paper tin, whatever you want to call it. And I've lined each of these little cupcake holders. This one holds 12, this one holds 24. Now, let's go over here and see what else I have. Alrighty, so over here, what do I have? I've gone ahead and I've already crushed two cups of vanilla wafers. So for the crust, I will not be using a graham cracker crust. I'll be using these wafers, vanilla wafers, right there. And let's go over the rest of the ingredients. Now to make this crust, of course, as you can see, I've already started. I've already crushed up two cups of vanilla wafers. To that, I'm going to melt up four ounces of unsalted butter. And when that's done, I'm going to add it to these, the crushed vanilla wafers. And I'll be using a half a cup of brown sugar. This is actually turbinado sugar, I'll show you. It's a raw cane turbinado sugar, I'll be adding to that. And I'll be adding as well a quarter here a quarter actually you know that's a half of a teaspoon of um ground cinnamon and a quarter of a teaspoon of kosher salt will be added to make the crust so four things to make the crust vanilla wafers two cups four ounces of unsalted butter one, half a cup of brown terminado sugar we've got here some ground uh, cinnamon and that would be a half of a teaspoon. And we have a quarter of a teaspoon of kosher salt. Now that takes care of the crust. Now let's go over what else I've got here. Alrighty, let's go over what's on this countertop here. Now I did mention that this is going to be a no-bake cheesecake five ways, correct? Five ways. So let's see what five flavors we'll be using. But before we get to that, let's go over some of the ingredients that we first need to get start to start this process and start the creaming. Okay. So I'll be using Philadelphia cream cheese, of course, and three packages of eight ounces each. So three eight ounce packages of Philadelphia cream cheese one cup as you can see here and you know i love to use my famous vanilla sugar and it's white granulated sugar that's vanilla bean infused and over here i have a half a cup of sour cream so what do we have here half a cup of sour cream one cup of vanilla infused granulated sugar that's white sugar and three packages of eight ounce philadelphia original cream cheese so in this beast over here, my mixer, I'm going to add all three of these ingredients, set it on a low medium speed and just whip it until it's nice and beautifully incorporated and all that sugar is nicely melted. Now let's go over the next portion of this. What do I have here? Hmm. Well, for these five flavors, I have to say one will be a plain cream cheese. And I'm just simply gonna dust it with a little bit of vanilla sugar on the end. So that's one. So for anybody who doesn't like flavors, that's gonna pretty much suit your palate. The next flavor will be, I'll be using orange zest. So the zest of one entire orange. 
And of course, I'll be adding one drop of this stuff here, which is Valencia Orange. It's a natural sweetener. And you can probably find this on Thrive Market, I believe. So this is the brand I use, Sweet Leaf. And of course, it's Stevia. So just one drop, not a dropper, one drop. So one drop that will go into the batter when I've separated it, along with half of the amount of the orange zest when we zest it. Of course, the zest of one full lemon as well, but we'll be using a half into the batter and of course, one drop of this. Same thing, Stevia. It's my Sweet Leaf brand, so one drop just as a bit of a flavor enhancer. So half of that will go into the batter. We'll be using the zest of one lime as well. And of course we'll be using half of the lime zest. The rest we'll be using as a garnish. So there we have, so far we talked about four flavors, right? One plain, one that's orange, one that's lemon, one that's lime, and ta-da! What do we have here? We've got some Bailey's Irish cream. That, my friends, is a bit of fun. That's our final and fifth flavor. So that's how we're going to have our five different flavors of our no-bake cream cheese. Now, you might say, well, you didn't talk about another ingredient that's right over here, and you're right. I didn't talk about the mascarpone, or, or rather mascarpone cheese. Alrighty, so this cheesecake is going to be in pretty much two stages. And one, one part is where we're going to be creaming sugar and the, um, the Philadelphia cream cheese into this little bad boy over here. And the other one will be in another large bowl, which I have right here set up separately. I'll be using a hand mixer. And in that hand mixer, what I'll be doing is, see, we have mascarpone cheese right here. 16 ounces we'll be using. And of course, some heavy whipping cream, which I'll be using round about one to two cups. And I'll explain to you a little later. And for every cup of whipping cream, I'll be using two tablespoons of powdered confectioner's sugar. So listen carefully how this is gonna go. When I start to incorporate, or rather use the mascarpone, I'll be using one cup of heavy whipping cream. To that, I'm going to add two tablespoons of the confectioner's sugar. Whip that completely until I get stiff peaks. Once I get stiff peaks, I'm going to fold in the mascarpone cheese. Whip it all together so it's nice and light, and this is going to help to sort of not deflate that uh, ear that we just put into that heavy whipping cream and that whipped cream that we just made. So it's gonna help to sort of stabilize it of sorts and give this cheesecake more of a nice, uh, light, airy, mousse-like consistency. Now, how are we going to get that Bailey's Irish cream? Now, of course, we're going to separate our batter once we're all done. Once we've mixed our mascarpone cheese and our heavy whipping cream together, we're going to fold it in. We're gonna take the cheesecake, the cheese batter that we've been uh, beating in here, which is that Philadelphia cream cheese. We're going to fold that into the mascarpone mixture with the heavy whipping cream. So we're pretty much gonna use probably about two cups of the heavy whipping cream. Then we'll divide that batter, keep a little separate, in which we're gonna add about two tablespoons of this bit of goodness here. And that is our Bailey's Irish cream. So let's get started. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get started with making our crust so we can fill up our tins over here and get them refrigerated and so they can start to set up and then start creaming our cream cheeses. Alrighty, so we're gonna get cracking here on the on the cracker crust. So that's our vanilla wafer crust for our cheesecake, our little mini cheesecakes. So I've already added in here, as you can see, the kosher salt. I've added the ground cinnamon, I've added the brown sugar. 
Now I'm just gonna give this a quick little mix with my fork, just like so. And I've went ahead and I've already melted up our butter. So we're just gonna add this directly in, just like so. Make sure we get all that goodness out. Get all that butter out. That's precisely what we want. Perfect. And we're going to give this a quick little mix. And as you can see, in my crust, it's not very smooth, right? We still have some chunks of that wafer in there. And that's pretty much how I like it because I like that nice homemade sort of feel because I don't like that full store box type of look. And I think a cracker crust, especially whether it's Niller wafer or a graham cracker crust, it's actually much more fun to eat. And it just seems so much easier and nicer when it doesn't seem as though you just bought this stuff right off of the shelf, because that's not what we want. So I'm gonna just get this nicely incorporated and we're gonna start to fill up our tins. We'll see how much of this we actually need. And if we need to, if I need to actually get more tins ready once we've got our batters to put together and pour into our little paper tins. So let's see. Alrighty, before we get started on actually um, filling these tins actually on the bottom with our cracker crust, let's just move over to this beast over here so we can get the ball rolling on this. So I've already added in here as you can see in the mixer, or three packages of Philadelphia cream cheese. I've also went ahead and I've added that sour cream. Now I'm going to add in or sugar. There we go. That is nice. And I'm gonna make sure I get this nice and up here. There we go this on this little splash guard there and we're going to set this to a medium speed start very low and there we go we're gonna let this baby go for a little while and cream up beautifully let's just slowly increase this there we go and Another level. Almost forgot to mention, guys, I'm going to add in one tablespoon of all-purpose flour. So while this is mixing, I'm just going to drizzle that in, just like that. And then we're going to crank up the speed on this baby right here. Now we're gonna set it and forget it. Alrighty guys, so I noticed here that our crumbs are actually for our crust, I think it looks a little bit dry and it's probably because of these vanilla wafers. So apparently four ounces of butter, unsalted butter is not really gonna work very well. So I went ahead and I warmed up an extra two ounces. So I think this should do the trick. So we're going to let that sit in there. And now we're going to incorporate it all together because we need this a bit more wet, as you can see, just like this, so that when we put together in our little muffin tins over there and refrigerate, it, refrigerate these little tins after we've set them up, that they're able to hold their shape. And this is the consistency I've been looking for. See, when I use graham crackers, four ounces is just right for two cups of graham cracker crust. But with vanilla wafers, I'm finding with two cups of crumbled um, vanilla wafers, you're going to need six ounces of butter because this is the consistency we need. Sort of like this, that wet sand, yep. That's how it's going to set up, that's what we need. 
So now we're gonna get ahead and I'm gonna get started on these tins. Now let me show you what I'll be using to get the tins started. I'll be using a melon baller or rather a small ice cream scooper if you want and it's really easy to use this stuff. I'm going to be using round about, I'll say a level, or let's see if that's enough. Yep, just about a level amount here and we're gonna drop them into the tins just like that and just kind of gently push it down like that. And there you have it. It's not supposed to be perfect because again, that's not what we're looking for. Again, drop it in. And if you have a little less than a full or a level scoop of the crust, that's totally fine as well. But you wanna make sure you push this down nice and firm so that when we refrigerate this, we get a nice firm crust on the bottom. So our cream cheese, our cheesecake actually has something really nice, a nice firm cup on the bottom so that it holds together. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill these all up. Alrighty guys, so I've got some of our crust that's already in our little tins over here. Now you can either press this down and nice and firm with a spoon or using two fingers, which is your index and your middle, use these two and just simply firmly press down into the cup, just like so. So that works wonders as well. And last one, of course I just said index finger, but it's actually middle finger and ring finger, firmly pressing down. And there you have it. This is how beautiful our tin looks with our crust. And we're gonna put these in the refrigerator for about uh, at least an hour and let them firm up before we pour any types of batter into them. Now let's switch this out. And I'm going to go ahead with the larger tins. Now, if you notice, I doubled the amount that I had. So it's just in case we need it. I wanna make sure that we have enough crust because we clearly do. So with the crust, I'm going to be using a level scooper, just one and pour it in. And same thing, we're just going to put one scoop into each. We have plenty. Then we can either use our fingers again and press it out, or we can simply use a spoon and press it out. So let's just get all of this in. This time I'm gonna use a spoon and simply press this down, just like so. You wanna be able to do it nice and firm. Do that, that works. Or Actually, I like how my finger just simply works nicely. Just firmly press into the bottom of the cup. Just a little bit of work so that when we refrigerate these babies, they form up and they form that beautiful crust on the bottom. And we have our final larger tin done. And now we're going to pop these babies into the refrigerator for a good old hour or so before we add our cheesecake batter. Alrighty, so time to get some zesting going on. And I'm going to start with our orange zest. So we're just gonna do this. Hold that there nice and firm. Yep, and we're gonna start with our assisting. There we go. Hold that again. And that's looking beautiful. Now, of course, you need to be very careful when you're doing this, because this stuff is sharp, guys. It is sharp. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get all of our fruits nicely zested. That orange smells amazing, I have to say. Gorgeous. 
Yama, Yama, Yama. Alrighty, so our orange zest is all done. See that? We zested the entire orange. And this is what our zest looks like. How beautiful, right? It smells amazing, by the way. Now, time for the lemon. So once again, hold on to this nice and firm. And here we go. Yep, that's what I'm looking for. And we're going to gently zest. Again, please be careful. You can lose a knuckle nice and easy here. So the goal is keep your fingers and just let's get the fruit zest. That's the goal here. And it's really important to invest in really good tools. They really help. Look how quickly we were able to get all that zest off. Beautiful. Mm -mm. Let me tell you, this kitchen smells beautiful with all of these citric smells and flavors. Wow. I actually feel like eating this right now <laughs> in a simple straight batter. Boy, wouldn't that be a dessert and a half, huh? Oh, yes. And I think we have enough of that lemon. Yep, I think we've pretty much got most of that already. There we go. Get the rest of that out. Oh, yes. Perfect. And there you have it. Our lemon zest is ready. Time for the lime. Now it's time for our lime zest. Once again, watch those knuckles. Try to save them. Goal is to get just simply the zest. Keep your knuckles. Yep. Smells great, by the way. I love actually how fresh lime zest smells. It really, nothing beats that. Fresh flavors. Wow. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Yummy. Now, as I mentioned before, half of the zest I'll be using in the divided batters, of course. And the other half I'll be using as a garnish in which I'm simply going to add a bit of sugar and drop it on the top. Oh, yummy, 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 yummy. These fresh flavors, wow, so yummy. Okay, and we have just about enough of that zest that we need. Yep, I think we pretty much got it now. Yep, don't need much more than that. There we go. And I'll get the excess out. And there you have it. We have all of our lemon zest. Look at that, how pretty is that look, huh? We've got our lime zest. Once again, we have our lemon zest. And we have our orange zest. So we have our full fruit lineup, or citric lineup right here and ready to go. Alrighty guys, so I've gone ahead here and set up four bowls. As you notice, it's not five, because one would be for the Bailey's cream, which will be totally separate. I've just got the citruses here. In one bowl, I've actually, for the plain, I've just added around about a teaspoon of Madagascar vanilla bean extract, and that's pure Madagascar vanilla bean extract in here. So that would be your plain, which would be mostly, you know, it's not plain, it's vanilla bean. The next over here, I have added half of that lime zest that we talked about and half I've reserved. Over on this bowl here, I've added half of the orange zest. And over here, I've added another half of the lemon zest. So what I'm going to do is a 2D lime zest. I'm going to add the juice of a half of a lime because we have no flavor enhancers for that. So this is gonna be around about half of a lime, which is 
I'm guessing around about a tablespoon of juice I've got in there. So we're just gonna let this sit and hang out until I'm ready for that batter. To the others, what I'm going to do is, see this one here, it says Valencia orange. So this is the bowl. Let's just get this out in front here for you. You can see, so that's our orange zest. I'm going to add a drop. There you go, one. And maybe we'll just add one, two. Two drops of that Valencia orange flavor enhancer, and that's of course sugar free. Now we have lemon to contend with. I'm gonna get these bowls spaced out. As you can see, our lemon zest. I'm going to do the same thing now with or lemon drop. And of course, you can see I'm using the brand Sweet Leaf. And this is stevia. So I'm just going to add a nice little two drops. One, two, there we go. And just set that aside. So our bowls are ready. And now let's go over and see what else we got going on. Alrighty, so on this side, what do we have going on? I've got, I've already cracked open our mascarpone cheese. I've got that ready to go. And these are the remaining, these are the, what I've reserved of the zest, which is the orange, the lemon, and the lime. What I went ahead is I sprinkled in around about a quarter of a teaspoon each of um, sugar, and I've just kind of like mixed it up. And we're going to reserve it because that's going to be our garnish for later. Over here, I've got this nice big bowl. Our mixer is done. So this here that we've whipped up nice and fine, it's beautiful. This would be our cream cheese along with our vanilla bean sugar and our sour cream and our tablespoon of flour. That's all nicely whipped up and it's nice and light. So we're gonna keep that off to the side. And now we're going to go ahead. I've got up here set up. I've already added to this bowl, this large bowl right here, two cups of heavy whipping cream. Alrighty, to our bowl of heavy whipping cream, I'm going to add two tablespoons of confectioner's sugar. Add that in. Just gonna set this off to the side. And on our lowest setting on my hand mixer, I'm going to go down to level one and start beating until we have firm peaks. And just take a look. Our whipping cream is just at the part where we need it. Look at that. We've got nice stiff peaks. All right, to this, I'm going to simply reserve myself a nice little cupful here of this heavy whipping cream. Just a little like this because I need to add some Baileys to this. So we're just going to keep this off here to the side because we need some goodness to happen in here. Good amount of happiness, right? So we're going to keep this off to the side. Now we're going to simply add in our cream cheese mixture from earlier into our heavy cream here that we've just whipped up. And let's just add all of that until everything is nicely mixed in and then we'll separate into our flavored bowls. So let's make sure we get everything in. Yep. Don't want to waste any of this. It's too good. Okay, I think we got that everything we can get out of that bowl. Okay, just very quickly before we start incorporating that while I have the whipped cream into that bowl, that reserved whipped cream, add it in, into this other bowl. Now I'm going to simply add two tablespoons of or beautiful 
Bailey's, right? Or Bailey's, our happiness in there. So let's just do that nice and quick right here. We've got one. And we've got two. That's a nice, beautiful amount in there. Yeah. And let's just do this really quick. I just added in our mascarpone cheese, and now we're gonna give this a whirl. So take a look at our cheesecake batter. How beautiful and light this looks. It looks like a cloud, look at that. So I'm gonna take a couple of scoops out of this, pop it into my second bowl over here. Mmm, that tastes really good. With our Bailey's cream. Just add a little bit more. Over there. Incorporate this, give it a little spurn over here. There we go, it'll work. Our Bailey's portion here is done with our cheesecake, so that's ready to be to put into our little cupcake tins. And now we have the rest of the batter in which we're going to divide over there. So I've gone ahead and divided up our batter. So in here we have the orange, which I need to incorporate, the lime plus the lime juice. We have over here the lemon. And of course we have the vanilla. So I'm just going to quickly incorporate all of these and get them ready for our tins. Alrighty, so I have my nice little icing bag here ready and I've already filled up some of our Bailey's cheesecake cream. Mm, that is yummy if I could stop tasting. And I'm simply going to start piping it in. There we go. We're going to add a little bit more. More Haiti. So there we go. How beautiful does that look? And the Bailey's cheesecake. Ooh, how pretty. Mmm, yummy. Now let's fill up our bag for some more. Alrighty, so our Bailey's portion is done. It's already piped in and I finished it with a piece of dark chocolate up on the end. And now I filled up my bag and I'm about to start piping in or lime. A lime cheesecake, and here we go. Just make sure we get that nice and tight. And this completes our lime portion. Nice and beautiful. 
beautiful. So now we're going to get ready to do our orange and lemon. Alrighty, so our lime cheesecakes are done piping up and now I am starting on our lemon. Just gonna add a bit of that lemon zest now up on top so we know the flavor of this is a lemon. It's a nice little reminder. There we go. And of course I added a bit of sugar to that. So it's a nice little reminder. And it's not very tart. Got a little bit of sweetness to it. Yummy. And then the last two. Nice little there. And the nice little healthy right there on the top. A little bit more on this guy. Right there. There we go. Oh, it is yummy. I can steal a little from there. Drop that on there. Beautiful. Okay, and now it's time to pipe up our Valencia orange cheesecake. There we go. Hmm. And that was nice. Got a nice serving of the orange. Now let's put some orange zest. Take a little couple of pinches of that, drop it on, a little bit there, a little bit here, looking beautiful, and it smells amazing guys, it really does. You want to make sure we use all of that zest because it is beautiful, and tastes amazing. More on that. Get a little bit more there. This way we at least have an idea of what the flavor is when we pick up one of these babies to taste. And there we go. And we've got a little bit more here left. Gorgeous. Now let's get ready to do the plain guy, which is the vanilla. Now our final flavor or vanilla. And how pretty do we look? Good thing I made those extra tins. Now I didn't need exactly one, but hey, not bad at all. going to sprinkle a little bit of, uh, hmm, I think I'm going to do some cinnamon sugar on this. Okay, some cinnamon sugar. That's how we're going to do our little vanilla. Finish that up like that. And I'm just going to keep a couple plain, just like that. And there we have it or five flavors of cheesecake. Over here, right here, we've got our Barrel Bailey's Irish Cream in which I finished with a little bit of dark chocolate up on the top. Over here, of course, we have some more Bailey's going up on top. We've got some of our lime cheesecake or lemon cheesecake. Finished up over here with a bit of orange or Valencia orange and then finally finished up with or vanilla cheesecake and some of them I dusted with a little bit of cinnamon sugar on the end. Alrighty folks and now we're all nicely plated up. Let me give you a nice tight shot. That first one there that's our Bailey's and right back behind there that's our orange our Valencia orange and the two back there we have that one is with the cinnamon sugar and the other plain that's our vanilla and then off to our right we have our lemon give you a nice little tight shot on that there we go our lemon cheesecake and let's
let's finish with our lime. Take a look at that. How gorgeous, right? Absolutely stunning. Really, really stunning. And now we're going to pretty up everything because you know we do. A little bit of powdered sugar. There we go. A little bit of powdered sugar makes everybody and everything happy. And that's the way we do it. Along mama style. There we go. Gorgeous. And there we have it. No big cheesecake, eggless cheesecake, five ways with count it five flavors. Five flavors. This cheesecake is a soft cheesecake, so be sure to freeze overnight and serve directly from the freezer straight to the table. Is that as much fun for you as it was for me? I sure hope so. That was a fabulous recipe and I sure hope you try it. Don't forget guys, I hope you liked this video and if you did, feel free to look us up on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And don't forget to subscribe, 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 give us a like, a follow, and a share. Mwah.